Well, this was supposed to be a full cataract surgery critique with a focus on one aspect of lens disassembly, but after a quick start, I found certain nuances of hydrodissection took on a life of their own and rather became the main theme. In fact, this video chiefly deals with about 13 seconds of hydrodissection and why, even after some good fluid waves, the lens still does not turn. All right, here's the case beginning. Um, paracentesis held about 180 degrees away. Nicely done, followed by lidocaine. And that'll sting sometimes for about five or 10 seconds. Doesn't last long. And here's the Helon 5 that we use for our viscoelastic product. And then securing the eye through the paracentesis with a 0.12, we go ahead and do the keratotomy. We usually secure the eye through the paracentesis with a 0.12 forceps because that provides suitable grip and it's well anesthetized. If you try to secure it with the conjunctiva, the conj will often tear, it'll often bleed, the eye is not as secured, and the patient may be more prone to feeling it. Also notice that the keratome is tilted toward the paracentesis. That is, the left side of the blade is closer to the limbus than the right side of the blade. That helps to ensure that you have a rectangular keratotomy rather than a trapezoidal one. A particular doctor that I was working with likes to use the red reflex light during the procedure, and you can see here how that one reflex disappeared. This will be a very nice initiation of the rexus, but be careful when you're putting your instrument in so that you don't routinely hit the decimase membrane because eventually that can produce tears. And now that that's produced or it's opened, now we're going to go ahead and use the utrata forceps to go ahead and carry it around 360 degrees. When I do my capsular rexus, I usually will have the 0.12 forceps in the carat, pardon me, in the paracentesis because that helps to secure it and keep the eye nicely centered, though it seems that most do not secure it secondarily like that, and it usually works out quite well. I just like to have things very centered when I do it, but no matter, this turns out quite well. And you can see you have a nice uh, circular 360 degree capsular axis. Move on to the hydrodissection phase, and the cannula is put well under the capsule here. Uh, there's no fluid wave, or maybe a little smidge of one there but it doesn't go all the way across. So we reposition and we get sort of a fluid wave and a half. And now we're gonna get the Connor wand and see if it will turn. I would be surprised if it would turn here. And as you will see, it does not. Note that the Connor wand is being placed in a good position to get good torque, but there's not enough hydrodissection done. Next, we're gonna take this uh, much slower. At this point, the cannula has not begun to impinge the lens. We'll let it roll forward a little bit. And now the blue arrow is showing the edge of the rexus, and the green arrow is showing wrinkled lens material as the cannula is distorting it. We'll let it roll forward, and you can still see some more manipulation of the lens material without going under the capsule. Then it's going to go under the capsule, and we'll pause it here. And when, beside those green arrows, you can see that darkish reflex. That just means that the cannula is down inside the lens material itself and not right under the cannula. Pull it forward some more and there's another interesting reflex that we can notice here. There's the green arrow showing again where the cannula penetrates the lens centrally and the new blue arrows show a new reflex that's on both sides of the cannula. What this means is that the cannula is being pulled forward and the capsule distorted much more toward the iris. This will become relevant in a second as we see how the hydrodissection itself behaves. Now we'll go through this almost in a freeze frame mode, and here you can see the very first instance where we see some of the hydrodissection fluid coming there beside that green arrow. That material, or that fluid, is actually inside the lens, sort of in a hydrodissection plane rather than being subcapsular. Here is the second frame of this, also in the hydrodissection plane. And this extends pretty much all the way to the edge of the capsule, but still hasn't come into the anterior chamber or beneath the Helon 5. In this third frame, we see a section of hydrodelineation extending along the right side of the cannula, and the left side it continues to extend and is now beyond the edge of the capsule, but still is within the lens itself. 
Here is frame 4, and the Hydra delineations continue to extend, but something new shows up in this, which is very interesting. This is demarcated by this white line, which I've drawn around it, and this represents the BSS, which has broken free from the Hydra delineation plane and gone both subcapsular there on the left and then between the lens and the uh, viscoelastic more diffusely. And here we toggle it a little bit so you can sort of perceive that more and you may want to jump back and forth on your own time to sort of grasp really what's developed there. Now we're going to go ahead and toggle back through the next frame and hopefully you can begin to see the expansion of the hydro delineation as well as the extension very very early underneath other areas of the capsule. In some ways it's as if the whole ring of the capsule orexis is lifted a little bit anterior as it curls away and peels off of the lens substance by the BSS. This next frame has about six things that continue this theme. Let me first point out three lines that help to understand what is deep and what is superficial in the lens. The purple line represents the deepest and that's the hydro delineation line. The white line represents hydrodissection, where the capsule is peeling loose from the underlying lens. And of course, there's the capsule of Rexus, and it's important to notice how the hydrodissection line stops right at the capsule of Rexus. While the hydrodelineation line runs beneath both the hydrodissection line and the capsule of Rexus and goes much more centrally. At this point, there's really two fluid infusion sectors that are happening. One is the ongoing infusion of fluid into the hydrodelineation area, and then that has penetrated forward and runs between the lens face and the viscoelastic. And as it does so, it continues to peel forward the capsular rexus off of the lens. And you can see that pretty well demarcated along that white line, and you can see it subtly demarcated along the pink. Let's retoggle this so you can see the progress across those frames now that we've talked about it. And here's another little nubbin of hydro dissection that's happening. And also beneath it, the hydro delineation has expanded. The final piece I want to point out during this frame is the change that's happening in the hydro delineation plane. This is here by the blue arrow, and as the fluid is coming out of this cannula, it is having an impact in essentially the epinuclear shells that are in there and this section is being broken free and is coming forward. Let's preview the next one-fifth of a second. What's occurring on the right side of the image should be evident by this stage, but what's occurring on the left side is much more subtle. The subtle part is delineated by this green line, but it is also distinct from the blue line here and the blue line here, which represent the original hydrodissection. The green line represents fluid that is going in front of the capsule and thus is pushing the Helon 5 out of the way as it moves toward the sulcus. You may not easily kind of believe that, uh, but just watch the way that the right side changes and you can see a subtle extension of that type of hydro dissection there on the left side of the cannula and then the other fluid that's going in front of the capsule seems to be distinct from that. Here let's play it back and forth again so you can sort of see how it expands beneath the viscoelastic. Here's the next one third of a second which we're going to talk about. The image I will take you to first is toward the end of that sequence and the analogy that will help you understand that is the fold of a taco shell. Now think back to the beginning of this where we had the cannula being placed into the lens substance. And now come back to where we've been working and note how the cannula produces a taco shell. That's a lot because the patient is moving their eye to the left and the cannula is being held fairly static. There are only two more parts of this clip that I want to draw out. And the first is right here with the viscoelastic that bubbles out. That's just evidence that we are insufflating BSS. There's one more thing, and watch this clip several times. There's very subtle toward the end, and it's up in the left corner of this image. This is the only part of this hydro dissection where we actually get a posterior fluid wave, and it's only a very small part proportion of the whole lens. So now we're six seconds in, and here's my concept of the anterior hydro dissection, as well as the hydro delineation and the posterior hydro dissection.
a useful question for you to think about now was whether the lens would turn within the capsule if we attempted it. The next seven seconds produce a much more effective hydra dissection, and I want to break this down like I did the first six seconds so it becomes evident. After an initial attempt at nine o'clock, the doctor decided to reposition the cannula and the hydra dissection will be pursued at this level. So look at this composite. Image A is just the prior frame that we saw. Image B is one frame later, so one thirtieth of a second. And you can hopefully see that the superficial layers of the lens are bunching up. And that is demonstrated along line, you know, the blue line there in, in image C. Uh, to give you a, another sort of view of it, look at what we have in D there, where I'm using a pen to wrinkle the cloth on my table. And so in essence, the cannula is wrinkling the superficial layers of the lens. Back to the earlier part of the video where during the first hydra dissection the cannula was placed deeply into the lens, not right under the capsule. Now back to our composite image and I've changed B to E, which is another 1 30th of a second forward and you can still see the same bunching is developing. This is further seen if you look at the shadow that's beside the green arrow in E versus the lack of a shadow that's beside the green arrow in C. Continue making the same observation here with F and G, but notice that the shadow is a little less prominent because the cannula has been moved to the right a little bit. Now here in H is closer to the capsule orexis again, but the shadow continues to diminish. That just means that there's a more superficial and a more accurate placement of the cannula, which should be just underneath the capsule. And here finally we are at I, where the cannula is right up against the rexus and there's no wrinkles, so it's properly placed and ready to advance into the subcapsular area. You may look at this video and figure that you go straight to F, but in reality going from position A to position F is a dynamic thing, and as you get more and more experienced, position F will become much more natural than it might be at the beginning. So it will be about one second between when we have the cannula adjacent to the rexus and to the place right before hydro dissection actually commences. And I'm not going to take this frame by frame because it's 30 of them, uh, but we'll break those 30 frames into about six or seven so you can see it move forward. And here we are one frame before the hydro dissection wave crosses, and here they cross. So the conclusion to draw is proper placement of the hydro dissection cannula produces good posterior fluid waves. Now with that set of posterior fluid waves, you figure it will turn. And so we obtain the counter wand, and we pull, and sometimes we'll push, and it just doesn't turn. All right, now let me talk to you a little bit about what is going on with why this thing won't turn. And this is the model that I've made of our lens. And this section out here represents the part of the lens that you cannot see because it's obscured behind uh, the iris. Um, if you'll recall from the earlier part of the video, this is the part of the anterior capsule that was hydro uh, dissected. What I want to do now is rotate this lens around and represent to you uh, the part of the back of the lens that is hydro dissected. So um, all we really know is the part that we could see the fluid wave go across and that's sort of represented here if I take away the lens and you can sort of see the part that's been hydro dissected. And we know that out here fluid kind of went around from the inside of the capsule to the back of the capsule. What we do not know, if I turn this lens over, is how far exactly the fluid wave went but it did not go fully around or this lens would have turned. And so all of the area that is between this blue and this blue represents area of adhesions of the cortex to the capsule. And so when we put the Connor wand in over here, which uh, is what we did, and that's why it's all sort of smudged is because of the Connor wand trying to turn the lens, there's still way too much adhesion of the capsule to the lens substance, and that's why it doesn't turn. Well, there's so much more that could be said about this hydro dissection, but I think the video's run long enough, and I hope to do a follow-on video that uh, takes this to the next phase.